in the House. The top presiding officer is Parker DeDecker from Nina High School in Wisconsin, coached by Andy Peterson Longmore. Your winners in Congressional Debate House are in sixth place, Fadil Lawal from Seven Lakes High School in Texas, coached by Bryce Piotrowski, Kaylin Kabler, and Lillian Ediemi. In fifth place, Michael Kaiser from American Heritage Palm Beach High School in Florida, coached by PJ Samorian and Bo Lint. In fourth place, Camila Alatore from Seven Lakes High School in Texas, coached by Bryce Petrowski, Kaylin Kabler, and Lillian Ediemi. Placing third in the house, receiving a $250 scholarship, is Kira Dixon from Round Rock Christian Academy in Texas, coached by Kathleen Feroz. Placing second in the house, receiving a $500 scholarship, is Hans Elazari from Oak Grove High School in Mississippi, coached by Shane Cole. Your national champion in Congressional Debate House, receiving a $1,000 scholarship from the National Speech and Debate Association, is Parker DeDecker from Nina High School in Wisconsin, coached by Andy Peterson Longmore. The House Leadership Bowl is awarded to the representative whose peers voted them most outstanding in the final session. The 2023 House Leadership Bowl winner is Parker DeDecker from Nina High School in Wisconsin, coached by Andy Peterson Longmore. Okay, so number one, and first and foremost, I still cannot believe that happened. Um, I sit in my room during the day, and I look up at that thing, and I miss, like, major imposter syndrome. And winning nationals was such a cool and idealized experience for me, only because, like, I never thought that it would have happened. I didn't expect it. I didn't come into nationals knowing that, like, I was shooting to be the next national champion. That wasn't my goal. The biggest thing for me that I found really important about nationals is that I went in with a very open mind and I told myself, I just want to do one step better than I did last year. So in July or June of 2021, during 2021 nationals, which were online, I quarterfinaled and I told myself, well, the next year I want to semifinal and my senior year, I want to final in nationals. So I came into nationals over the summer, not having an expectation to final at all, but just knowing I wanted to do better than the year before and have some sort of like contextual growth that I could build upon. And so for me, that was a really freeing experience only because like I didn't come into nationals with any pressure on my shoulders. I came in with the hope and want to speak about what I was passionate about, to show significant changes in my skill growth that I've been working on throughout the year and really just kind of spend time with all the friends that I have met online during the pandemic and during COVID through online debate, but didn't have, did not have the opportunity to meet in person. So that was my favorite and most exciting thing that I was looking forward to nationals for. Fast forward to nationals. The first time I break, it wasn't super emotional. Like I was happy, like I was proud of myself, but like breaking the quarterfinals, I was like, okay, I built upon the progress I did last year. Fast forward to semifinals. Breaking the semifinals, I got a little bit emotional only because I had done better than the year before. And throughout last year, I was just struggling with a lot of different things, whether it was with keeping up on my grades, um, just because of how much stress I was enduring and putting on myself. I competed in a debate tournament every single weekend, which by all means is not healthy in any way. And I really will be talking about in a mini series, um, one of our later episodes, the importance of taking care of yourself during the debate season. But 
I was just putting so much pressure on myself to do these debate tournaments, to get the TOC bids, to take all the hardest classes at the high school and be enrolled as a college student at the same time. And all of it had really compounded down and put a lot of stress on me throughout the year. So coming into nationals, I knew that like I would just be proud of myself for doing better because like despite everything that I had dealt with during the year, like breaking the semifinals would be an amazing and revitalizing experience. And so that happened. And so I got a little emotional. Fast forward to semifinals. Um, it's really fun. I'm enjoying my time. I was really proud of my performance. I PO'd my way. I PO'd qu prelims, quarters, semifinals. I got the big semifinals gavel. Here, we'll grab it right now. Um, so like, this is ultimately what like I was sh shooting for. Like, I really wanted this gavel. If you guys didn't know, at like the National Speech and Debate Tournament, for every like round that you go to, the gavels get like significantly bigger. So like the prelims and quarters gavels are still pretty much like the same in size, but as you progress throughout the tournament, they get bigger. So I, this is what I was shooting for at nationals and I was able to achieve that goal, which was a really amazing and positive experience for me because number one, I achieved my goals. I had met all my friends. I had made some meaningful relationships at the national speech and debate tournament whilst also being able to challenge some of the issues going on. As many of you know, during nationals, the NSDA didn't provide free Wi-Fi to students competing at the Expo Center, and it caused a large socioeconomic disparity for many students competing after we'd already paid thousands of dollars to be in Louisville. So I was most proud of the fact now that I had broke or done well at the National Speech and Debate Tournament, but that I was able to touch lives and advocate for communities that were being marginalized at this tournament. So by creating my protest and by creating the petition and the online media post talking about like trying to hold the NSD accountable, that was the most fulfilling part of nationals, I would say, was being able to put that out and experience my love for social advocacy and justice and actually apply it firsthand into the debate space, but not actually in round, but outside around to ensure that people were able to have access. So that was a really amazing achievement. So being able to do both that and semifinal was more than I could ask for. Fast forward to uh, Thursday night, and my team and I were at a pizza, we're having pizza dinner, and like, I know breaks are coming out, and my coach actually like took my phone away from me. She's like, you're stressing yourself out, you cannot do this, like, you don't get to look at breaks, whatever, whatever. She's like, you can just wait, we'll eat dinner, and then you can look at breaks. Me knowing that like breaks came out at seven o'clock, I was super nervous. So I wait, it's like 7.23, like I don't have my phone, I go and I look and breaks still aren't posted. And I was freaking out. I was like, what is going on? Like, why aren't they posted? So we waited another seven minutes and then breaks got posted at 7.30 instead of seven nationals. And I broke to finals, which was honestly for me, a really like cathartic moment because it felt so freeing to be able to do something so amazing and actually progress farther than I had even like envisioned for myself. So this was such a profound opportunity for me. And I did cry with my team member, Isabel, and her and I got really emotional only because like that was her last debate. Like NSDA's was her last debate tournament. She was a graduating senior. She was attending college in the fall. I was going into my senior year. I had been in Congress for a very short period of time. Like I had not even done it for a year. Um, I had done it for like, what is it? 14 months of Congress prior national. Some people have been doing it since middle school. I was like relatively new to the event. So it was really cool for me to be able to break the finals. And so to do that was an opportunity and a dream and aspiration in and of itself. Going into the final round, I knew that I had a pretty good chance of being elected as the presiding officer. Um, I was a little nervous about it only because there was two other really amazing presiding officer candidates, but I knew I would be able to put everything that I had learned throughout the year, my 750 hours of presiding and really put it into practice and focus into the fact that I prioritize equity and efficiency during my rounds. And so I did that and I explained the importance of that and it ended up paying off really well because then I was able to get this thing, this girl, she is beautiful, my nice big NSDA gavel. Um, and just to be able to preside the final round as well as being as also being able to speak was amazing because you were around some of the best public speakers and debaters in the nation. I was honored to be in that final round. Everyone there was bringing something into focus. Everyone there was advocating for their own communities and making it such an amazing experience. So I was beyond honored to have that opportunity. And then their final round is over. I was really proud of my performance. Um, 
in terms of speaking and presiding and everything like that. And then comes awards. And so if you guys don't know, like at the NSDA for award ceremony in Congress, what they'll do is they'll release like documents like their app, basically being like the top 14 are these people. So seven through 14 are here. Um, one through six are here. In the one through six, like breakings when they are recognizing you during awards also includes the top presiding officer and the leadership bowl winner. So I knew I was getting the top presiding officer. So I knew I'd be recognizing the top one through six. So in the top six, you could either be recognizing eight people if like there's a presiding officer, leadership bowl winner, and then the top six of the tournament for your division, or there could be six people, meaning one person was the PO, one person got the leadership bowl, or uh, sort of like a pattern of all of those. So I'm sitting in the award ceremony, just finished up watching the amazing original oratory final round with my team and some friends. I got to go meet some more people. Um, because it was the first time that, like, I was able to go, like, hang out with my speech friends, because, like, at the NSDAs, you are very separated during the tournament, you're in completely separate locations, so it was a really amazing experience to get to watch those final rounds and get to meet up with people, but then the list gets released, and it was, like, top one through six, and there was only six of us, and I was on the list, and it also, like, I knew I was getting recognized for the top PO, so I was like, okay, like, this is, like, super profound, I was like, I was not expecting to take top six as a presiding officer, like, I was told coming into this tournament, like, don't have expectations for a person to win as a PO. It's not going to happen this year. Like, it won't happen. And so, thinking that, I was like, okay, I'll just, like take sixth place. I'll be sixth place, happy, get my gavel. Like, I'm proud of myself. So, we're sitting on the stage, and like you saw before, like, I'm sitting there, and like, I'm like pacing because I'm just like waiting for them to call my name because I'm like so nervous. You're sitting on like this big stage looking out, and there's thousands of people in the audience. I'm like, okay, like, they're going to call my name. I get to walk off stage. Great. I get my gavel. Like, it's an amazing experience. They keep going down through the names. And I keep thinking the next one's gonna be, so they go sixth place. Okay, so I'm just like, I'm surely in fifth place. Then they move down, I'm like, okay, then I'm in fourth place. Then they get into like the scholarships and it's actually like getting like a big deal because in addition to like winning like the NSDA trophies, you're also winning money, like scholarship money for college. So it's like 250. And then it's down between my friends, Hans and I, and I love Hans, he's absolutely amazing. Um, he's attending Harvard University this year. So he is quite absolutely the definition of an academic weapon. And he was an amazing debate run while I was in the community. Um, and while he was in the community. And so we're sitting there together. Um, and it wasn't pictured on camera, but him and I both like hugged because we were both really emotional because it was a really amazing opportunity because both of us had been around before. We hit in semifinals. We both kind of had like the same experience coming from like school districts that were very underfunded when it came to speech and debate in areas where speech and debate was isolated. So him and I really connected over that. So we're standing there. And then like second place and you saw in the video and then they call Hans's names and I'm like freaking out because like never in my wildest dreams would I have thought that I could have won nationals, especially coming from like an area where speech and debate is extremely underfunded. There's not value being placed on it in Wisconsin as much as it should be. It was really surprising and a surreal experience for me only because I was able to represent not only all the adversity that I had persevered through, but the amazing state of Wisconsin that has isn't being discussed in the speech and debate community. I was able to bring that legacy back to my state, back to my school, and back to my friends and family. And that was a really amazing experience. Um, and then so I get that, I get my trophy. So that went up there. I'm trying to walk off the stage after I like get it. I got my lay and the lay is really beautiful. And I get my lay, I'm walking off stage, I'm trying to go down the stairs and like this lady like pushes me. She goes, no, like you need to stay on the stage. I'm so confused at this point. Cause I'm like, okay, like I'm crying. Like I need to get off the stage. I was like, I don't want the entire world to see me bawling my eyes out. And then, so Mr. Burlett is on the stage and he's like announcing everything and is like in uh, the house leadership bowl. And he's going through like the description of everything. And then he says my name. I am flabbergasted at this point because I'm like, there's no way that I was top presenting officer, I championed the house, and I got the leadership bowl. So I did, and I basically like had to like hold them and it was like a really like awkward position, but it was really cool to get to stand up there with all three of those awards as a culmination of all the hard work and effort that I had put into the season. And I think which award I was most grateful for is probably the leadership bowl. Um, obviously, like, holding the title of a national champion and top presiding officer are huge. But the leadership role was super important to me because it means that, like, I was considered a leader among my peers. And I take the words that my peers share with me and their opinions very highly and really emphasize them in my life. So the fact that they considered me to be a leader and that everything that I had done throughout the week was considered 
good enough to be considered a leader among my peers was one of the most profound experiences because that's been something I've been shooting for. I've always wanted to be considered a good leader. I wanted to be someone that's able to advocate for my peers. So I'm being able to achieve that as well as the other accolades as well and being able to experience all that with an amazing team and an amazing coach. Nationals was such a really amazing experience. I think the biggest thing that a lot of people don't understand is that Nationals is really fun because you get trophies, obviously, but the most important part of Nationals is all the people that you get to meet. I met people from all around the world at Nationals that made so many different connections and the friendships I made there still last a lifetime. I know they will. Like I talk to everybody on a daily basis. Some of my closest friends of my life, I prepped with during Nationals, I worked with, I love them to the end of the world. And so for me, Nationals is an opportunity to unify our community in speech and debate and bring us all into a opportunity for us to rejoice and praise our community and to unify our voices. And that was my favorite part of Nationals. So I think reflecting on it all, I am still humbled by the opportunity and extremely grateful. And I hope that in the next episode, I can explain to you um, the road leading up to Nationals, what it looked like to prep, prepare, um, really bring you into my process of prepping for a big upcoming tournament and break that down. Um, I'm going to Harvard in February, as well as going to Glenbrooks next weekend. So you guys will get some footage from all of that and kind of get to contextualize how I'm prepping for those big upcoming tournaments. But thank you so much if you made it to the end of the video. Thank you for staying here. Um, thank you for supporting the How to Congress. We are always here to support you and bring you information on how to be the best congressional debater that you can possibly be and to reach all of your goals. So with that, I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. And if you, this video was helpful, um, please comment if you thought any questions you need to share, like the video. And if you want to see more content like this one, subscribe to our channel and go follow us on Instagram. All the best. Thank you.